I'm going to talk about something that in pool we call a pre-shot routine. That's a sequence of steps a player goes through uh, before, before every shot. But first a story. A couple of years ago I used to go every day at noon time uh, to the locker room and I would change and I'd go for a run. Every now and then I'd get to my locker and somebody would be talking to me or something and I'd go to do my locker combination and it would be gone from my memory. I would have no clue. Even though I knew this combination as well as I knew my own telephone number, it would be gone. And I had this feeling that I could stand there all afternoon and this locker combination wasn't going to come back to me. Here's what I would do, and it worked like a charm. I would exit the locker room, go down the hall, I turn around, and I would start approaching the locker room like I did every day at noontime. I'd approach the locker room, go into the locker room, make a right turn, take the st six steps to my locker. And when I got there, I didn't have to try to think about it. That locker combination would just be there. Somehow that locker combination was burned into my head as part of a sequence of steps. I'm not a psychologist, but it seems like there's a lot of things we remember like this. If you're trying to re recall the lines from the second verse of a song, you might have to go back to the beginning of the song. Or, or a sequence of letters in the alphabet, it might help to go back to the beginning of the alphabet. There's a lot of things that, that we remember like that. What does this have to do with pool? Well, if you play this game long enough, I guarantee you there will be a time, there will be some important match or, or game for you, whether it's the Christmas time, king in the basement with your brother-in-law, or, or an important league match, or a gambling match, or a tournament finals. But there'll be some time when you're down on the ball and you have an easy shot, a straightforward shot, and you will be executing warm-up strokes, and it will feel like your rear arm is just not connected to your body, like it has no clue what to do. The muscle memory will be gone. Uh, this, the simple act of, of a simple forward and back stroke uh, necessary to execute a decent pool stroke will just not be there. Uh, it will seem like your mind has no connection to your arm, uh, and you won't know what to do. You'll probably keep executing warm-up strokes, waiting for it to come back, but like my locker combination, it won't come back. Uh, you may panic. Um, you want to have a pre-stroke routine. You want to have a sequence of, of events that is similar to me walking down the hall and starting to enter the locker room again exactly the same way I did every day at noontime. Uh, you want to do that because that will bring this, uh, this memory back to you. Um, so in the steps of a, of a person's pre-stroke uh, routine are, are unique. If you look at different professional players, you'll see them do different things. Uh, but there's a bunch of common elements. Uh, you may see things that people do uh, that have no discernible connection to anything that might be valuable for the shot. I mean, they might adjust their cap, or they might wipe their forehead, or they, uh, they might move chalk around on the table and bunch up the chalk or something like that. These are things that have value to that person because they are part of this, this sequence of events that is burned into the memory and that makes everything sort of automatic. But there's other steps in the pre-shot routine that do have some clear uh, value as far as alignment, stance, uh, remembering shots, uh, executing a, a, a good stroke, and so forth. So let me talk about some of the things uh, that a person might think about. Uh, the first thing uh, that you're going to do on, on every shot is decide, uh, decide what your plan is and decide what you're going to do. You're going to analyze the table. <coughs> In this particular case, I've got the cue ball here, the seven ball, the eight ball, and the nine ball. And if I'm playing nine ball, <coughs> it's pretty clear that I'm not going to play safe. I'm going to go for the run out. Uh, so I'm going to shoot the seven ball in and play shape for the eight ball. Now, the cue ball naturally is going to come off the seven ball about like this and off the rail like that. Uh, I do not want to play shape for the eight ball into that corner pocket uh, because the cue ball will be coming across the line of the shot. And that's generally a bad thing because the quality of the next shot is way too sensitive to the exact speed of the cue that I hit the cue ball. Uh, much better is to, and I, and I think almost any player would play it like this, uh, much better is to have the cue ball come off here and take this line back here 
to play the eight ball into this side pocket. And the important consideration there is recognizing I'm going to hit the eight ball in next and want to come down table for the nine ball is I do not want to be on this side of the shot line here uh, or of, of the, uh, the line from the eight ball to the bucket. I want to be on this side so that I have the correct angle on the eight ball. So those are the considerations that, that a player would go through in about a microsecond. Uh, but once I've done that, uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to chalk the cue. When I chalk the cue, uh, notice a couple things. One, the cue is vertical. Uh, and uh, in fact, let me talk about that a little bit. Uh, if you were carrying a rifle around, you wouldn't carry it around horizontal like this. You don't put a rifle horizontal unless you're going to shoot something. Uh, I think we should give a similar reverence to a pool cue. Uh, don't put it horizontal unless you're going to hit something with it, or I'm using it as a pointer here or something. But uh, walk around with the cue vertical or nearly vertical, uh, and then when you chalk the cue, uh, the tip is not over the table, so you're not getting chalk uh, particles on the table and you just gently swipe looking at the tip uh, and making sure that you get a good uh, thin even layer with no uh, bare spots. Then I'm going to put the chalk back down on the rail. Two things I think about when I do that. One, this is going to be the business area of my stroke uh, here and I don't want any chalk in my in my sight off the side of my, my uh, vision there. So I'm going to put it down someplace else and when I put it down, I'm going to put it down face up so that I'm not getting chalk particles on the, on the rail. Okay. Uh, now I've chalked. I've decided what I'm going to do, and I've chalked that I'm, I'm ready to uh, execute the shot. Uh, I'm going to look at this shot uh, first from the point of view of the object ball going to the center of the pocket, so along this line. I'm going to walk over right here to see what it looks like along this line. Why do I do that? There's a number of reasons. One is a person might want to be looking at the contact point on the object ball if they're using ghost ball type aiming method. Um, another reason is that if I shoot this, if I shoot a hundred thousand shots on the pool table, this shot is going to come up many times in that sequence, or a shot very close to this. And I want, when I see this shot, when my mind sees the shot that many times, I want it to see the same thing. And if I want it to see the same thing, I need to collect the data or put the data into my head in the same way. So if I approach this shot from this side one time and just get down and shoot it, and I approach it from this side another time and just get down and shoot it, uh, my mind doesn't fully grasp that it's seeing the same shot. If I collect the data in the same way, looking along this line, and then next, looking along the line from the cue ball to the object ball, then my mind can catalog it and it can remember the results and, and, uh, and, and how to adjust and, and, and how to learn about this shot. So, first, the line from the object ball to the pocket, then the line from the cue ball to the object ball, and once again, I am going to approach along this line from the cue ball to the object ball. I'm going to approach the table along this line. So I'm going to step back from the table, uh, at least a good step uh, beyond where my stance is going to be, uh, and I'm going to approach along that line. That's an important thing. You'll see a lot of amateur players, maybe they hit the six ball in over here, and they're walking around with their stick uh, like this, maybe their bridge hand on it, and they're kind of searching for another shot, and they get down into position. Uh, the problem with that is it's hard to get into position correctly uh, when you come sideways into it. And another thing is that one time when you hit the shot, you're going to come from this direction, and another time you're going to come from this direction, and a third time you're going to come from the chair. Uh, and so, so you have to learn many different ways to get into the correct stance for this one shot. Much better to teach your, uh, for your mind, to teach your body to get into the stance in one way. In fact, when you hit 10,000 shots, all approaching along the line of the shot, you will learn, you will ingrain into your head exactly how to get into the right stance uh, for, 